In today's video, we take a look at this. This is the Altel Smart Controller SE. Didn't have a lot of time to take a look at this in, in depth when we were doing our first flight, but I figured we would take a closer look at what you get with this smart controller. Let's get started. What's good everybody, Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo. Today we take a deep dive look at the Altel Robotics Smart Controller SE, a much improved smart controller from Altel Robotics. With that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware. So looking over the device, it is a candy bar shape unit. It is, you know, I'm trying to give you an idea of how big it actually is. This is an iPhone 14 Max or Pro Max. And if I just set it next to it, you can sort of get a, an idea of how big this smart controller actually is when compared to an iPhone. So it's really not that big of a device. It's actually very, very, Good feeling in the hand and the layout of the buttons just make a lot of sense this time around. So looking at the front of it, we have our two gimbals. They are IP43 rated gimbals. They have little plastic covers that will help keep water and dust out of it, which I think is fantastic. We have a home button, pause button, and then at the top, we have a custom button, our record and photo button, and we have two scroll wheels at the very, very top of the device. There is a port right here. It takes a minute for me to open it up. But underneath here, we have full-size HDMI, a SD card slot, and a USB-A port as well. So if you want to do data transfer, you can connect anything that is USB-A related to it. There's also a speaker up here at the top of the device as well. And along the back side, we have a fan port, two more speakers, a spot for the sticks. So we have left side stick, right side stick, which is really fantastic. And then, of course, we also have a kickstand, which I like this. Not a lot of smart controllers are offering a kickstand, but this is very, very premium and it is made out of metal, which I really like. Another interesting thing about this smart controller, unlike other smart controllers, is the fact that the battery is removable. It just simply comes right out. It's a magnetic slot, so we can just slip it in there really easy, and it locks into place very easily. You can see like it's pushing, it pulls it directly toward the back power side, which I think is pretty cool. So all done with battery. So if you want it to, you could purchase a secondary battery, keep one of them charged, ready to go. So if you're out in the field and this thing dies, you can just simply swap the battery over relatively easy. Now I will say that this battery does charge pretty quickly. It's a 1900 milliamp hour battery. So, uh, you know, take that for what it is. It's, it's going to take probably about the same time that a cell phone takes to charge, roughly about 60 to 90 minutes if you are using a 65 watt wall charger. So, but having the battery to where we can remove it is something that I feel like more companies need to do. All right, let's go ahead and power this on, take a look at the internals and the screen. All righty, so what we have here on the front of the smart controller is a 6.4 inch OLED display. It looks really, really nice. And it honestly is about the size of a cell phone screen, uh, a large iPhone or a large Android screen. Um, it does look great. It is a quad HD display, so you're getting a nice amount of DPI on the screen, 319 DPI to be exact. So that's a 2048 by 1080p is the screen resolution. And overall, I have no complaints with the display. The colors look very ac accurate. Um, it is bright enough outside. It is 800 nits on the display. So max brightness, 800 nits. Some of you may gripe at that, but considering the size of this, there is a trade-off, 800 nits versus having you know battery life. This lasts about three hours on the 1900 milliamp hour battery. So it's, it's one of those things. There, there is definitely some trade-offs happening here, but I felt like just using this with 800 nits, I felt like it was, it was okay. It, I didn't really feel like I was needing anything extra. It would have been nice to have, you know, 1200 nits or 1500 nits of brightness, but I was able to squeak by with the 800 nits, which was perfect because it's 800 nits sustained brightness, meaning that it's not dimming, it's not fluctuating. So that's something to take into account. All right, so let's just go ahead and take a look at this. Um, it, it is a very, very vanilla Android. 
this is 100% Android 11, no additional skinning happening here, so it is a very, very smooth, fast experience. Um, I actually had to look up the screen hertz refresh because I thought that this was a 90 hertz display, but it is only a 60 hertz display. The screen's moving at 60 frames per second, but it does feel really, really smooth, which is fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and open up CPU-Z so we can talk a little bit about the silicon that is loaded on this device. So this is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 660 clocked at 2.2 gigahertz. It is an 8-core CPU, so you do have quite a bit of processing power here. It has only got four gigs of RAM. Now, considering that its only task is to really run the Altel Explorer app, I don't think that that is a huge deal breaker that it has four gigs. It still feels really, really smooth. And a lot of that is in part to the fact that it is running Android 11. But overall, it feels smooth. The Snapdragon 660 was released in 2017. So it is a five year old processor at the time of recording. Yeah, it's about five years old. It was actually released April 2017. It is not the newest processor that's on the block but it is one that is probably the most stable and it's been used in quite a few devices throughout the years and a lot of people really haven't had problems with it. So that could be one of the reasons why Altel did choose to use this processor, one, because it's been on the market for a while and two, they are relatively reliable and you'll find them in a lot of devices that are, have more of a, a utilitarian purpose such as this. So looking over the device here, it is set to the performance scaling governor. And if we go into the device itself, uh, 319 DPI, again, four gigs of RAM. The internal storage, this is where I have some, some sort of gripes here because if I look on Altel's website, it says that this storage should be 128 gigs, but this is showing that I only have an internal storage of 40 gigs. But if I look at the Android app, because again, most of that storage is consumed by the operating system, this is only a 64 gig internal storage. Now you can run expandable storage on this if you needed additional storage. Obviously, if you're doing any sort of screen recording, additional storage is definitely a must, but this is only 64 gigs of internal storage that comes on the ROM itself. So it's not 128 gigs. I think that may be a typo on Altel's part. Hopefully they will get that fixed, but uh, 64 gigs is what you can expect from the uh, smart controller. So uh, overall, the performance is very, very good. There are really no apps loaded on this whatsoever. You have a calendar, gallery, file, sound recorder. There is a screen recording built in, so you can do onboard screen recording if you needed it. But beyond that, uh, there, there really isn't anything else on this. Like I said, it's bone stock. There is no app store, so if you're going to sideload any APKs, you'll need to either download them from their website or download them from Google Play. Google Play Services is also not installed on this device by default. It's not a Google certified device, so that's something that you'll wanna keep in mind. It does have Google Chrome on there, however, because some of these stock ROMs that are used for devices like this do come with Chrome preloaded versus that older browser that they used to include with the Android SDK. So this does have the latest version of the Altel Explorer app, and you can see that the drone that this is working with as of right now, Evo 2 version 3. And again, that is because this has a new chipset. They're calling it Skylink 2.0, which basically combines 5.8, 2.4, and 900 megahertz into a seamless and simultaneous chipset to allow better range, better transmission back down to the RC. Now, one thing to keep in mind, that extra penetration from the 900 megahertz is only going to come from the FCC versions of this device. So if you're over in the CE world, like Europe, London, uh, over there, CE will not have the 900 megahertz. So you have to be in an FCC country in order to have that benefit of uh, that 900 megahertz. So that is a bit of a letdown, but unfortunately that is what it is. But overall, um, just my initial thoughts of this device, it's a much better device than the previous generation. I'm just gonna grab my, my smart controller so you can sort of see the size difference because it's really dramatic. 
So this is my OG smart controller and you can tell I haven't really used this very much because it's collecting dust. But size wise, the original smart controller just absolutely dwarfs, dwarfs the uh, smart controller SE. Uh, the original smart controller was not a joy to use. It was very cumbersome. And um, you, as you can see, I have dust on it because I just never really found myself using it. Alrighty, but that's a closer look at the new smart controller SE. Like I said, I've, I've found this to be very, very useful so far. I've been flying the Evo the past couple of days doing jobs with it and uh, I found that this worked pretty damn good. Battery charges very fast as long as I'm charging on a 65 watt wall charger. I've had no problems with the battery and I just, I love the screen, I love the OLED display. It's very clear, it's, it's hard to explain but you just know that it's OLED when you look at it and um, it does look really, really amazing. Especially flying, blacks are nice and deep and dark and the colors just sort of pop off of it. Um, very impressive, good job with this uh, smart controller Altel. I really don't have uh, any complaints to make about it. Some people were talking about these antennas, that they're crazy big. One nice thing about these antennas is the fact that you can replace them with something else. If you feel like these are too long, you can get different antennas for these. However, you know, again, these antennas fold up, so it's only really an issue when you're flying. So they fold down just like this, and like I said, I can throw this in a bag and feel fairly confident that it's not gonna take up a lot of space. And it just, it's a very light controller too. I can't really explain it, but it's a super lightweight controller. So again, really nothing to complain about here with the Smart Controller SE. I think it's a great upgrade. I really can't wait to see the firmware that allows this to work with the Evo Lite and the Nano. And as soon as it does, I'll have a video showcasing that. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed, smash that like button, drop your questions down below. I will see you in the next video. Stay original. checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message, homie, you no flexing on me. My attorney gonna call and collect. Blessings on blessing for me. My success has only made them envious. They got upset. I had to put all their egos in check. I want the money, the power, respect, and I heard you on so-and-so. You got to